Hey, Forrest here. Nothing like getting paid. And with ICCU's mobile app, I can deposit checks or accept Zelle payments so the money hits my account fast. I just wish there was an app for mowing the rest of these lawns. Right now, Lithia Ford of Boise is buying used vehicles. How much you want for the SUV? Uh, I don't know. Well, Lithia Ford will give you more than that. How much more? More than you think. I'm not thinking anything. I'm thinking you might get even more than that. See how much more you can get at Lithia Ford of Boise. When it comes to concrete, we've got you covered. Ropaint.com offers custom concrete coating services for your garage, business, warehouse, and more. And we do it in one day. We are your complete concrete coatings solution. Welcome to the Lithia Ford of Boise pregame show from Bronco Nation News. As we get you set for the latest news, insight, and analysis as game time approaches. The BNN pregame show is presented by Lithia Ford of Boise. Check out LithiaFordBoise.com to view the full inventory of vehicles. Or check them out at 8853 West Fairview in Boise. Today's broadcast is coming from the Cutwater Spirits Can Cocktail Studios. Check out one of their more than 30 flavors of pre-mixed premium cocktails at your local gas station or grocery store. Now, let's head out and join B.J. Reigns for the Lithia Ford of Boise pregame show from Bronco Nation News. Ah, yes, game day in Boise, Idaho with a spot in the Mountain West Championship potentially on the line today. For the Boise State football team, welcome on into the Lithia Ford of Boise pregame show. Lithia Ford of Boise.com. You can see the Broncos arriving. A Bronco walk. Mike Sanford has done this walk numerous times. You see the players stopping to uh, acknowledge the Lyle Smith statue. And there he is, interim coach Spencer Danielson, stopping to greet fans on his way into Albertson Stadium. Nice, cool, crisp fall day. Broncos uh, looking like they're ready for business today here, arriving just uh, a little bit ago, and you see the Broncos ready to go today. Big one on the blue, a spot in the Mountain West Championship on the line. You see a lot of the players, coaches, staff. There's George Shalani. There's Ashton Genty. The Broncos uh, getting some work in, going with the all-blue uniforms today. Near a sellout crowd expected. This was just a short time ago. The Broncos, the Falcons. And there's the Broncos uh, getting set after their uh, stretching. Man, it's going to be fun. I wish I was inside Albertson Stadium today. We're here on the with the Afford of Boise pregame show. We bring you on in, and we got Mike Sanford with us. Mike, uh, 11 years. This is the first home game I have missed since I arrived in Boise in 2013. I am down here in Orlando, Florida, getting ready for the Boise State basketball game tonight. But we've got Jaden Finch, our intern there, sending back those videos. We'll have full coverage of the football game as well. We have Brandon Walton writing an article uh, on today, and, and uh, we're down here following the game, and then we'll have a basketball game uh, right after the football game. So uh, busy night in Boise State Athletics, but obviously Mike Sanford, uh, nothing like a Friday afternoon, chance to clinch a spot in the championship game on the line. We see you're ready to go, man. How we doing? Hey, I'm ready to roll, man. I'm out here in Vegas. Uh, I was just celebrated Thanksgiving with my whole family uh, at my mom and dad's house. And uh, I wanted to wish you and all Bronco Nation News family a very happy Thanksgiving, belated. Um, and what a day to, to be a Bronco. Um, you know, we would never have imagined this three weeks ago after the Fresno State loss. And yet here we are uh, playing for a Mountain West championship berth. Um, I actually had a chance at my dad's state championship game. Uh, to meet Barry Odom and, and talk to him for a little bit. And, um, you know, he's got his eyes on San Jose State, but don't think that uh, he even made a comment about Boise State uh, as the team that he might think that they're going to end up playing. So today is a humongous day uh, for, for this Boise State season, but really for Boise State uh, football history. You're looking at 2019, uh, the last outright Mountain West championship this team's won. That's four years ago. Four years ago, it seemed, it's a long time ago, man. And usually the game is the, actually the last championship game they were in was in Las Vegas, 2020, against uh, San Jose State during that weird COVID year. They played it at Sam Boyd Stadium. Uh, what an atmosphere! What a moment it would be! Just a, awesome. I, I think Vegas is a cool spot to have the championship game anyway. I know it would technically be, I guess, uh, you know, a neutral site or however they phrase it, a home game for uh, for, for UNLV. But uh, playing at Allegiant Stadium, and you're right, Mike. Uh, crazy how we got here, man. You look at the I saw a lot of people on social 
social media saying they were thankful for New Mexico and thankful for uh, Hawaii for pulling off some upsets the last couple of weeks. Uh, who would have thought that? I know you guys talked about it on Ball Talk on Monday, but uh, who would have thought? And as there it is right away, Sky Ship says, thank you, New Mexico running backs. Uh, who would have thought that uh, Boise State would be in this position uh, with what's happened, that the chaos in the Mountain West the last couple of weeks? Yeah, I'd say that the uh, Jared Zabransky today uh, trying to live up to the standard that was created uh, a couple weeks back uh, by raising up the blue chaos. I think that is a perfectly apropos uh, term for all the things that have gone on, not only in the Boise State program, but in this Dadgum Mountain West Conference. It has been uh, something that, that I haven't seen in years uh, to have teams that are hovering around 500 have a chance to play for the championship game. Um, and that's what, exactly where we're at. There's, what, four teams that are still mathematically eligible to be Mountain West Conference champions. And two of those teams are, are with a loss today, finish 500, and with a win, um, you know, end up obviously in the Mountain West title, uh, potentially. So it's just, uh, it's chaos. And it's the kind of chaos that I'm really looking forward to watching. My family's going to go uh, to a local uh, uh, place to set up shop as Boise State fans. And um, I got my boys in their Boise State football uniforms. And my son Gunner is a basketball guy. So I got him a Boise State basketball s- sweatshirt to root on the Leon Rice and the boys today. So uh, just a big game. And uh, trust me when I say this, I think that, that the, the, the biggest element of this game, BJ, is going to be uh, – it's going to be Bronco Nation. It, it's going to be the home field advantage – uh, created, it's probably the only place in the Mountain West Conference that would create a true home field advantage on a Friday of Thanksgiving weekend. And that's uh, a major tip of the cap to, I think, the best fans uh, and certainly all of Group of Five football, and that's there in, in Boise. Yeah, only a couple hundred tickets were left as of earlier today, so it's going to be a near sun. I, I just thought of this, Mike. I hadn't really – I mean, you raising the blue chaos flag, I think, was right about when this turnaround started. Uh, this is uh, pretty <laughs> – I, I hadn't put – two and two together yet but uh, they were coming off the tough loss to fresno things did not look good and you raised the blue chaos flag and then on the post game show you and kent riddle and brad bedell uh, all were saying hey they're, they're, you're, you're telling us there's a chance they're still alive in a couple weeks here we are later so i think we bronco nation owes a lot of this turnaround to you yeah i don't think so uh, i think a lot of this uh, turnaround goes to george halani and dj shram being back and active and healthy and being able to play and lead this team. Um, I think about four weeks ago on Ball Talk, it talked about the reemergence of that senior leadership was going to be critical to really turning around this season. It looked like it was all for naught. Uh, it looked like it was going to be one of the biggest wasted seasons in the history of Boise State football. And here we are, week 12, playing for everything on the line. Um, you know, big credit to uh, Spencer Danielson and this staff. Uh, Spencer deserves so much credit. Um, but it's not just what he's done in a couple weeks. Uh, I guess it's been about yeah, about not even two weeks, right? Uh, that, that he's taken over as the interim head coach. I think we're at twelve days um, yeah. that he's been the interim head coach. Uh, but but just what he's done before that, the seven years leading up to this moment, um, he's created such incredible respect within that building. He's inc- he's he's obviously loved by this locker room, and I think that this is going to be a huge factor as Air Force is licking their wounds from the last three weeks. Uh, wasted opportunity after wasted opportunity. And it started with Air Force's just debacle at, you know, at and power field in, in my hometown of Denver, Colorado, and just laying a humongous egg to not be able to clinch the commander in chief trophy, which is just as big for them as the Mountain West title. And then it's been a downward slide since then. And I think it does go hand in hand with the lack of health from Zach Larrier. Yeah, that's been a huge uh, issue for them. They've had to go on to a freshman quarterback the last couple of games. We got to get this out of the way, though, Mike. Uh, folks are, uh, you know, wanting to know if Jeremiah Dickey uh, interviewed you while he was in Denver. Uh, anything <laughs> you can, uh, can can you can you just put it out there that you are not a candidate, or or, or maybe you are and you haven't told me. But uh, I know you're enjoying your family time. But uh, can you can you give us the status on if you're uh, in the mix for the Boise State job here? Yeah, well, I've I've been in Green Bay. Uh, and then I've been in Vegas. <laughs> I've just been with my family. So, no, I have had no interaction with Jeremiah Dickey. Um, and I, as I continue to say, whatever I can do to continue to help this program, whatever resource I can be, um, I will gladly offer those uh, that assistance to, um, to Jeremiah Dickey and, and to Spencer Danielson and to whatever I can because I love this place. Um, but I, obviously I'm really happy in, in my current situation. And, you know, the, the challenge of doing the media stuff is that, 
you know, I, I've had to transition into being less of a coach that says everything politically correct and more of a media member that uh, has to call truth what it is and, and how I see it and how I perceive it and analyze it. Um, and that's been a, a, a hard thing for me to do, but it's also been a whole lot of fun uh, to step into this new space. Well, what do you think of Spencer Danielson's chances then? Of, and obviously what you've been in that position, the interim guy trying to trying to get some wins and press, maybe hang on as the guy. I mean, you were in that situation at Colorado. I mean, I'm sure that was your your dream to win some games there and do enough to, to get that job full time. Uh, what do you make of Spencer Danielson? And I know he says he's not thinking about that, but I mean, if they go blow out Air Force today or win this game, I mean, if they win a championship next week, I know Jeremiah Dickey and his staff are out there traveling around make, doing interviews with folks, but uh, you win a Mountain West championship, it's going to be hard for Jeremiah to, uh, in my opinion, I mean, he may do it, but it's going to be a hard, hard decision, in my opinion, for him to go in another direction. The players love him. It, it seems like he's gaining steam here a little bit. And uh, how do you look at his chances here with a couple games to go maybe? Yeah, well, I've actually had a chance to communicate with Spencer and, and uh, obviously tell him I could be a resource to him. And he's, um, you know, what I what I <laughs> told him to do is just don't make this thing about the permanence because then you'll start focusing on things that don't matter. What really matters is is those players in the locker room, and he's poured into those players. You know, as it relates to Jeremiah Dickey's search, you know, I think that you know the uh, the big tea leaf that was released, uh, I believe, it was yesterday or the day before. Uh, was that was fantastic? I've never seen an athletic director kind of lay out the vision uh, to the fan base, to all the uh, constituents that make up the season ticket, uh, you know, sales, that make up the merchandise sales. Um, you want to talk about just a unique athletic director for him to lay out that vision? Um, you know, I think that was that was spectacular for him to do, and just shows his professionalism and his love for Bronco Nation. It's not just about him and his ego, um, which I think a lot of athletic directors do struggle with. He talks about being a servant leader, and I think that's exactly he's done. Um, I think that reading those tea leaves, I mean, this is a legit uh, search. It's a, na a true national search. Um, you know, and so I think, you know, Spencer Danielson and this staff, if they control what they can control and they continue to win, I think it certainly that en enters the candidacy. Um, but it does appear based off of a lot of the flights that are, uh, you know, being tracked by you and your and your uh, your dangerous team of journalists there in Boise. Um, I, I think that, that this is truly a national search. And, you know, I would be surprised, but but nothing ever truly shocks me um, if they do in, indeed, uh, you know, hire Spencer Danielson just based off the tea leaves I'm reading uh, from, you know, the laying out the search and on a private jet. Uh, it would it would be surprising to me. Yeah, they had nine Zoom interviews. Uh, then they started meeting with candidates in person down there at the, the – looked like the West in there at the Denver airport based on some of the tea leaves with the pen we saw on the table. And uh, we do know that they, they were in Denver for a couple of days trying to do neutral sites to meet with some of the candidates, although they did uh, – the, the plane did go to Bozeman and then ended up back in Boise on Wednesday. And uh, obviously Montana State's getting ready for, I think, a playoff game. So maybe they were up there and did the interview there. But uh, it sounds like more interviews on tap uh, this weekend. We'll see. I mean, the, the search is moving pretty quickly. I mean, you mentioned 12 – Daves of Spencer Danielson, uh, and maybe that's not quick, but to me, to, to already have done multiple in-person interviews in less than two weeks, uh, you know, maybe they already kind of saw this coming. I don't know, but, uh, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. I think Spencer Danielson, I think he would be a great choice personally. I, I think they could do a lot worse than Spencer Good Danielson. Lot. I've made that I've made that known. I mean, if they want to go get the, the splashy, sexy hire, maybe that's the case, but once you get past that elite top, top tier and you're looking at, you know, other coordinators at other schools, I, I think Spencer Danielson uh, would be a great choice, and I'm a little biased because he's great with the media, and I think he'd be a great, you know, people person and be a huge upgrade from from what it was, you know, in the, the past couple of years. But we'll see what happens. Obviously, he's trying to help his case today with a big win against Air Force. We showed the Bronco walk earlier. I want to play a little more of that uh, here, Mike. Just tell me what what's it like. Uh, I don't remember if they had this when you were coaching or not. I know they didn't have it when you were playing. I don't think, but uh, just in general, just in general, your other stops. I mean, walking into the game. You know, seeing the fans that that you're know, right there before you get the pads on and get ready to go, and obviously knowing what's at stake today for Boise State. Uh, what do you think's going through the minds of these players and coaches here? Just a whole bunch of excitement, knowing that you're going to play your final game as a senior at Boise State uh, on the blue. Um, you know, and, and to have this type of fa uh, fan support in, in, in on a team that's six and five. Uh, that's the, that's the bottom line. This is a six and five Boise State team. Um, we haven't been in this territory for 25 years. Am I right in saying that, BJ? Um, that you're you're fighting in in your very final game to to have a winning record throughout the regular season. And I think just having that support and feeling that love from Bronco Nation, it gives you the chills. I, I've done that walk at Notre Dame. You know, at one point, I think we walked through 100,000 people at Notre Dame uh, when we opened up against Texas in 2000.
2015, um, there were 80,000 in the stadium. And they said there was another 50,000 outside the stadium that couldn't get tickets. And so walking through a sea of humanity like that that supports you, it truly is like one of a kind type of a situation. So um, these players deserve it. They've been through a lot. They've been through a lot of head coaching changes, which hasn't been the normal at Boise State. Um, and, and, and they've stuck together. And my, my, I tip my cap to these guys for going through what they've gone through uh, and to continue that fight and playing really good football in the twilight of their career. So today, to me, it's truly all about these seniors and everything they've been through and Bronco Nation coming at the, to their side and loving them up. And I'll tell you what, Mike, I mean, in this day and age of the transfer portal and stuff, we obviously saw Eric McAllister leave when Andy was still here. But as soon as Andy Avalos was let go, that transfer portal opens up for Boise State's players, and they have 30 days to enter that window. Everybody else can't get in until December 4th. That's coming up a week from next you know, week, next to the Monday uh, following this one. But once Andy Avalos was let go, the, the transfer portal opened up for these players, and they had the chance, the opportunity to go ahead and put their name in and get a head start on that and zero players uh, have decided uh, to, to enter the transfer portal since Andy Avalos left. Uh, obviously, they saw something. They wanted to finish this out for the next couple of weeks. And, uh, you know, I know it's one thing to say the players are bought in, to say the players want to finish strong here, but it seems like with that game against Utah State, now having a chance on, of a championship here, uh, pretty remarkable that this team has all decided to stay bought in here down the stretch. Yeah, it sure does. We had the same thing at Colorado a year ago. Um, we had Brennan Lewis, our quarterback, had decided to go into the portal. We were 0 and 5. And you want to say, you know, you have that that window when a head coaching change is made. Um, you know, that was priority number one for me is meeting with every player, seeing where they were at. And um, we had zero players enter the transfer portal after Brendan Lewis had already done it, very similar to the timing of Eric McAllister before, uh, you know, Andy Avalos was, was let go. Um, you know, it, it's pretty normal. Um, you know, I think athletic directors do have a very good pulse on, you know, who who would be the guy on the staff to galvanize the group. Um, and I think I was in that, that exact situation a year ago. I don't think it's abnormal. Um, you know, if you have a completely toxic environment, like what I've heard is at Texas A&M, um, you know, and you have, you know, not only your head coach, but your coordinators are guys that are a little rough around the edges to the locker room. You, you might see more people enter the portal, but um, it's not as big a deal as I think everybody makes it out to be that once a head coaching move is made, that all of a sudden the floodgates open immediately. It typically is going to happen, um, you know, really either after the regular season or after the bowl season. Somebody was asking about the injury report. Is it out yet? No, we should have that in the next 10 minutes, but I, uh, I am told that it sounds like Riley Smith is going to be able to get out there. A 60-year senior uh, is going to be active and will get some snaps today in his final home game on the blue. It's funny, Mike, in years past, usually they're playing to try to host the championship. So it's senior night, senior day, whatever, but there's still technically maybe another home game coming now, if they're in the championship, this game is going to be uh, in Las Vegas. Uh, so uh, it, it is for sure the last home game of the year for and, and of the career for a lot of these guys. Who knows? George Helani does technically have another year. Who knows about Ashton Genty? Uh, who knows about Taylor Green? I mean, this could be the final home game for a lot of the key you know, Boise State players here. We know it is for a guy like DJ Schramm. Uh, I know your time is limited, so I got one more for you, and we'll let you roll, Mike. But what? Just, just your thoughts on this game. You mentioned Air Force; they're kind of going in the wrong direction. They've lost three straight. You're gonna have close to a sellout crowd. I mean, it would be such a buzzkill. All this build-up and hype for Boise State to go and lose this game. Uh, I just don't feel that it is happening. I think, I think Boise State, Spencer Danielson, this new energy. I don't care who they're playing today. I would feel pretty good about Boise State winning. But uh, just, just what are your final thoughts on this matchup, this game, and? potentially Boise State uh, living to play in a championship next week? I think Boise State is going to come out and do what they did against Utah State, but even with more uh, urgency in the first quarter. I will say this, when you look at the Air Force teams, I've watched them throughout the course of this year, and I've covered them You know, here in the, in the Colorado area that I live in. I'm not actually currently in Colorado. I'm in Vegas. But um, you know what I'd say is you'll know what kind of game this is going to be based off the first like 10 minutes of the football game. If Air Force starts slow and there's answers for their option game, I'm telling you it's it's a long game for Air Force and they can't get down by two possessions. Um, if, they, if they come out and their option is clicking on the first or second drive, uh, this thing's going to go into deep waters. Um, but you will know as a Boise State fan, as an Air Force fan, I think really eight to 10 minutes into this ball game, what kind of game it's going to be. Um, you know, I think it's really important to have answers uh, for all the variety of, of ball carriers that can get the football in their hands with this Air Force option offense. Um, it is lethal. But there is something that's just been missing in this Air Force team for the last month because they looked unstoppable. Their defense was playing awesome early in the season. And it's almost like the floodgates kind of opened 
Uh, once the Larrier injury happened and there was a little bit of, I would call it a little bit of uh, quiet controversy because Air Force doesn't get a whole bunch of media attention in the in the Denver market or even in the Colorado Springs market for that matter. I think that there was some controversy r- around Larrier's injury and how it was handled and him being like on the shelf, but then all of a sudden he plays against Navy. Um, I think that there's more to that story. And I think that that might be something internally that's tanked this team. Uh, I'm not, I, I don't know any information. I just kind of read between the lines and it does appear that this, this locker room, this team isn't playing like they were certainly two months ago. Uh, and, and I think that if they start fast, give them hope, give them life, this game's going to go into the fourth quarter and you better hold on to your butts. Cause it's going to come down to who has the ball last most likely. Cause air force can, they could eat away 12 minutes of clock on a touchdown drive to win a game. Uh, you got to get a two possession lead early and then you got to keep the foot on the gas pedal and continue to score and get your athletes out in space. And I think that's what Boise state's going to do today. Well, you heard it from Mike Sanford. You'll know early in this game, first quarter, how this game uh, could potentially go with how air force is looking. Devo Bronk, the final comment for Mike Sanford. Sanford is my man crush. So uh, Mike, uh, we appreciate you for jumping on. Enjoy the game. I know you're wishing you were at uh, circa, but uh, they don't allow kids. So you guys are going to go find another spot, but uh uh, you're missing out today, man. There's going to be a lot of football watching over at uh, Circa Resort and Casino. We got to get you back down, man. If we can, uh, if, whether it's a championship game or at some point here, we'll we'll, we'll get the the, the uh, BNN crew back down to Circa. But uh, appreciate you, Mike. We're going to take a quick 90 second timeout. We got a lot more still to come. We're going to talk basketball a little bit as well. But get your score predictions in, your comments, uh, things, and uh, we'll do that. But uh, Mike, appreciate you, man. Hey, I appreciate you, and I appreciate Bronco Nation for supporting this team. Uh, best fan base in the country, in my opinion. Uh, be loud. Um, you know, if if you're not the drinking type, get a lot of Red Bull, bang, energy drink in your system. If you're, you know, the kind that enjoy, enjoys a dull beverage, get, get lubed up a little bit and bring the freaking noise today. Bring it all, and let's make an unbelievable home field advantage. Go Broncos. We'll be watching. Plenty more still to get to back in 90 seconds here on Bronco Nation News. All Bronco Nation News broadcasts come from the Cutwater Spirits Canned Cocktail Studios. Check out one of their more than 30 flavors of premixed premium cocktails at your local gas station or grocery store. Cutwater Spirits, perfect for your next game day tailgate party. Our title sponsor is RowPaint.com. For all your commercial, industrial, residential painting needs, check out RowPaint.com. Don't forget about their concrete coatings. Transform that ugly concrete slab on your back patio in your garage in just one day. Contact rowpaint.com for a free estimate today. The official paint and coatings company of Boise State Athletics and our title sponsor at Bronco Nation News is rowpaint.com. Idaho Central Credit Union has been helping members achieve financial success for more than 80 years. There's an ICCU branch on almost every corner, but the closest is in your pocket with free e-branch mobile and online banking. See why more than 500,000 members love ICCU and join one in four Idahoans by making the switch today at ICCU. Since 1984, Ridley's Family Markets has prided itself on being a hometown food and drug store that employed value members of the local community. Ridley's Family Markets has 13 locations in the state of Idaho and many more in the surrounding states. Download the new Ridley's app to your smartphone, get savings up to 40% off at the checkout line, and find a location near you at shopridleys.com. Former Bronco Matt Bauscher is once again the number one ranked realtor in the Treasure Valley. No home is too big or too small for Matt and his team. Let them fulfill all your real estate needs at BauscherRealEstate.com. We're waiting for the uh, injury updates from Boise State. They should come any minute, but I am told Dimitri Washington is out again today. Riley Smith will play today. Uh, We'll find out any other surprises here shortly. We do have uh, some news on Air Force. Uh, Big news for Air Force. They're going to start senior Ben Britton at quarterback. Brent Brigham from the – paper there down in Colorado Springs, the Colorado Springs Gazette, the longtime beat writer there tweeting out that he hears that Ben Britton will make his first start at quarterback for Air Force, and he calls it, quote, a complete surprise. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. I just checked the stats on Ben Britton. He has uh, five career passing attempts, eight career rushing attempts, and again, he is a senior in 2023. He is 0 for 2 passing, and he has one rush for seven yards. So it looks like Ben Britton, seldom used uh, quarterback, again, in his career, Five rushing attempts, or five passing attempts, eight rushing attempts, and he is a senior for Air Force, a 6'1 quarterback out of Texas. He is going to make the start, his first career start as a senior on the blue uh, today. So if you're Boise State, you obviously 
were probably not uh, preparing for that. And uh, now you have a senior quarterback making his first career start on the blue. So uh, if you're Boise State and you're that crowd, you want to rattle him, get him going early, uh, as early as you can. Nate says, uh, oof, tough game and atmosphere for his start. Uh, totally agree. And so if you're Boise State, I think you want to pressure him, uh, get him early into some uh, positions that he's not necessarily used to. Uh, Sky Ship says full panic mode for Air Force. Um, yeah, I, you know, I, I don't know the reason behind that. They obviously started a freshman the last couple of games that has not worked well after their injuries at the quarterback position. And now there, it sounds like they're going to Ben Britton, a senior that has uh, seldom played in his entire Air Force career. So that is some late breaking stuff here uh, for Boise State. We got Greg Myers predicting 31 25. Get your uh, comments in, your thoughts. We will uh, get to them here on the uh, Lithia Florida Boise. Pre-game show as the uh, Broncos get set to uh, play against Air Force here in a uh, huge game on the blue. Uh, coming up, we just got the uh, injury report. This is uh, live from Boise State. Out today, Tyler Crow, Maddox Madsen, Marco Notriani, Chase Penry, Dimitri Washington, Tyler Wiegas, Shea Whiting, and Stefan Cobbs. Uh, so uh, no Cobbs and Whiting again. Cobbs is out for the season, we believe. So uh, Whiting also being out and uh, Chase Penry being out. You're going to see a ton of Austin Bolt and a ton of uh, Prince Strawn today in this game for Boise State. So your three starting wide receivers will be Billy Bowens, Prince Strawn, and uh, Austin Bolt. And they don't have a lot of depth behind them with three of their top you know, five or six receivers out today in Cobbs, Penry, Whiting, and then obviously McAllister gone as well. So we'll uh, – We'll see on the blue. You know, last time they had a home game on the blue, both uh, both guys, Prince Strawn and Austin Bolt, had touchdowns. So we'll see if they can do that again today because Boise State is limited again on uh, on the uh, wide receiver front. Uh, but again, uh, also Tyler Crow out today, a little bit of a surprise there. But you do have Halani and Genty both ready to go, which uh, they would have gotten the, the lion's share of the uh, carries today anyway. Uh, so other guys, uh, tough for Dimitri Washington, man. The guy comes back for his sixth year injuries again. He missed a lot of last year's I mean, the, the career of Dimitri Washington will be defined as what if, I mean, he was a guy, I remember uh, back when Curtis Weaver was leaving, he was supposed to step in and be that guy. And you had uh, Spencer Danielson saying he could be the next Curtis Weaver. He could be the next, you know, early round draft pick from Boise state. And it just never materialized due to the injuries the last couple of years. So you got to feel for Dimitri Washington senior day, the final game of his six year career. And he is inactive today and will not play. So tough news for, uh, for Dimitri Washington again, as he just has not been able to stay healthy the last couple of years. And uh, that, that is a bummer, uh, bummer for sure. So uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, you know, Taylor green, again, getting the start at home, um, I expect him to play really well. I mean, Air Force has had typically a, a pretty solid defense, but again, they've lost three games in a row and they're kind of uh, reeling right now. So, you know, they're still alive. If Air Force wins this game, they're still alive for the championship themselves. They're still playing for a championship. So we, you can't forget about that. They have a lot uh, still in the tank and a lot that they're still playing for. So um, I, I think Air Force, you know, is going to be motivated, but, you know, do they just have enough in the tank? To, to compete with Boise State on the road. I don't know if it doesn't feel like this to you guys, but uh, I saw that Boise State has won five of the last six against Air Force. And, man, does that not seem like it. It seems like Air Force gives them a game every time. And, it, you know, I had to look it up to make sure it was right. But Boise State has won five of the last six games against Air Force, which to me just seemed a little uh, a little surprising. But Sky says, bummer for Dimitri, great player. Uh, agree with that. Uh, do a Jack Sears, 75-yard touchdown pass to Austin Bolt. Uh, I guess you're talking about the game at Air Force a couple years ago. I think it was the first play of the game when Jack Sears threw a deep touchdown pass, I believe, to uh, C.T. Thomas, uh, if I'm correct, for a 75-yard touchdown as uh, Boise State won that game uh, on the road. Uh, Creamy Cold Boise has 45-28. Appreciate you, Creamy Cold Boise. 45-28 is his projection. Uh, TJ, I don't remember if I put this one up there or not, 32-20 to 20 is uh, his project his prediction there as well. Creamy Cold also believes that uh, – couple turnovers for the defense today. Well, they had four in the last game. It's going to be hard for them to top what they did uh, what they did uh, last game. Four turnovers and nine sacks for the defense. Uh, so we'll see uh, what happens there. Uh, Harold says, uh, cut water up. I totally agree. Perfect night to get some cut waters. We're in the Cutwater Mobile Studios right now. More than 30 flavors of pre-mixed premium cocktails. You can pick one up at your local gas station or grocery store. They've got like two for seven at the gas station. You can get your four packs. Highly recommend cut waters. This is a perfect night because you got Boise State football. And then right when the football game, the basketball game ends, we'll get to the basketball talk 
uh, here in a little bit. Uh, that was obviously a tough game last night for them, but uh, they got another big one against VCU uh, tonight, uh, and then uh, we'll find out who they will play on uh, Sunday. Um, but uh, Stetson says, uh, I believe, let's go Broncos. We had some nice uh, comments on uh, Mike Sanford, uh, a solid spot on takes. Glad he's at BNN. Would love to see him on the staff in some capacity. Uh, I think he's loving what he's doing with his family right now, so I wouldn't expect that. But uh, I know that uh, he uh, has done a great job, and he's enjoying coming on with us, and we appreciate uh, him uh, as well. Uh, let's see here. Um, yep, the starting fullback is a go for Air Force. That is correct. Um, let's see. Um, a lot of questions about Sanford, and again, he said he is not a candidate for the job. He did not meet with Jeremiah Dickey. I think we all thought that, but uh, he did confirm that earlier in the show. Uh, Hope Genty is at 100%. Uh, green on point with the passing decision and look forward to a good game. Um, yeah, uh, Halani starts on senior day. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. I don't know if they've officially announced that or not, but I would suspect Halani probably does uh, get out there uh, maybe first, and we'll see where Ashton Genty is at uh, on his way back uh, from that injury. Uh, Benson says 38, 27, uh, got to play discipline. Yeah. I mean, air force, uh, air force is not going to, uh, commit a lot of penalties. Air force is not going to make a lot of mistakes. I mean, it's typical air force team. So, uh, you certainly have to, uh, you know, do the little things to win a game like this. And you cannot turn the ball over if you're on offense as well. I mean, I don't think everybody knows this, but Air Force running that triple option runs the ball almost every play. They eat up the clock with those drives. So you don't get nearly as many possessions as you do in a normal game. If a normal game, you get 10 or 11 possessions, you may only get seven or eight in a game like this. So you have to make them count. You have to score. You have to control the clock yourself. And you cannot give up uh, turnovers and give the ball back to Air Force in good field position. You also can't fall behind. If you fall behind against Air Force and they can start milking that clock, it is really hard uh, to come back. So I think both of those are, are big ones today uh, for Boise State. Uh, Nate Staley's got 38 to 10. It's going to be tough for Air Force to score today. Wouldn't that be something if Boise State could pull out a 38 to 10 win? Uh, I, I don't know if it'd be quite that much of a blowout, but I do think uh, I do feel pretty good about Boise State winning this one uh, again today. Stetson's got uh, 45 to 28 with Boise State winning. James Forsyth, uh, I wonder why he would wonder that they need to get 14 first half points. I'm guessing the over under must be 13 or 13 and a half if uh, James Forsyth is uh, needing 14 first half points. Uh, Nate says the Broncos will cover. Uh, Roy's got 31 21 as well. So keep your comments coming, keep your questions coming, uh, your score predictions, your bold predictions. We'll talk a little basketball next. We're rolling along here. Kickoff is at uh, 4 10 here in Florida. 2:10 Mountain Time. The crowd is uh, filing in, and uh, we will be back. We'll try to get a little more uh, uh, scene setter from uh, from Albertson Stadium. We'll get a little more video to you that Jaden Finch is sending back. And uh, again, we got Senior Day, so those festivities are going to be underway shortly as well. Uh, but a lot to get to. We'll talk a little basketball as well. Don't go anywhere. Back in 90 seconds. This is the Lithia Florida Boise pregame show from the Cutwater Studios. A big day on the blue and a big day, big day here in Orlando, Florida for the basketball team as well. We're rolling. We'll be back in 90 seconds. Bronco Nation News is sponsored by Tommy Alquist and Ball Ventures Alquist, Idaho's premier commercial real estate development company. BVA projects specialize in office, retail, flex, medical, and industrial spaces located at some of the most strategic and visible locations in the Valley. Need a developer? Looking for new space? Think BVA. At BVA, we are Idaho's developer. The Nicolaisen family and SON management have proudly been operating Taco Bell restaurants in and around the Treasure Valley since 1969. One of the first to make a seven-figure donation to the Lyle Smith Society, they've also stepped up their support of Boise State Athletics with the Taco Bell Men's and Women's Basketball Endowed Scholarships. The Nicolaisen family and SON management have committed at least $310,000 by 2026. Get more information on their financial support at Boise State Athletics and find information on applying to work at Taco Bell at TacoBellWorks.com. Lithia Ford of Boise is a proud supporter of Boise State Athletics and the official car and truck of the Broncos. Lithia Ford of Boise supports Bronco student-athletes through NIL deals, including providing Ford vehicles to Taylor Green and Riley Smith from the football team and Paige Barsh from the volleyball team. Rain's family purchased RF-150 from Lithia Ford. Couldn't be happier with the purchase. Check out the all-electric F-150 Lightning or the electric Mustang Mach-E at Lithia Ford and make sure to check out their full inventory of vehicles at LithiaFordBoise.com. The Blue and Orange Store is the perfect spot to get all your gear for your next Bronco game. The Blue and Orange Store has official Nike apparel, including jerseys, shirts, sweatshirts, jackets, hats, and more. Wear what the Broncos wear and get it at the Blue and Orange Store, the second floor of the Boise Town Square Mall, or get free shipping on a $40 order online at theblueandorangestore.com.
All right. Uh, Ryan's got 38 21 is his prediction. Sky says uh, Boise State's putting a 50 burger today. So uh, that would be something, sure. Uh, Derek Harris is at the game. He says he sees Misa and Riley Smith out there. Uh, yes, uh, both those guys are active today. Riley Smith expected to see some stats, uh, some some at, some snaps. So appreciate you, Derek. Anybody else at the game? Let us know what uh, what you're seeing there as well, and tell us how the crowd's filing in. Uh, again, this is the first home game in my 11 years covering the team that I have missed. So uh, certainly a weird. Uh, feeling for me today. I am down here in Orlando, Florida with the basketball team. I have missed three games in my 11 years covering the team. I missed two games at Hawaii, uh, one of which was during COVID and there was the, the media stuff was uh, not able to go to that one. And then last year I was covering the Myrtle Beach Invitational with the basketball team, missed a road game at Wyoming, uh, but uh, I have not missed a home game on the blue in my 11 years covering the team. So certainly a, a weird feeling uh, for me to not be at the game and actually be uh, watching part of the first half uh, with my family uh, here at our Airbnb that we've got in Orlando. And then uh, at halftime or so, we'll be heading over to the basketball arena and uh, right about when the game, we're going to try if the game ends and there's enough time to do it, we're going to try to do a little quick 30 minute show in between. So literally the second the football game ends, be ready for a uh, emergency quick uh, live show uh, on the post-game show slash pre-game show for the basketball game. So uh, we're going to try to see if we can do it. If the game ends and there's enough time before the basketball game starts at 6 o'clock Mountain, we'll jump on real quick with your reactions and thoughts, and then we still will have a full show after the basketball game as well. So uh, Boise State basketball, I know it was a tough loss uh, yesterday. I know some folks are already uh, giving up on the season, are, are very negative, but it's another opportunity tonight against VCU. That game is at 6 p.m. Mountain Time on ESPNU. So you'll watch the football game, uh, have a chance to uh, go pick up some more cut waters from your local gas station, and then get ready uh, for a uh, big game for ba Boise State basketball against VCU. I get it. It was a disappointing game last night against Virginia Tech. Certainly a winnable game for Boise State. They fall 82-75. to 75 in that game, and uh, the turnovers were the big story. Given uh, Boise State basketball had 16 turnovers, it led to 27 points off turnovers for Virginia Tech. So uh, Boise State just a uh, little sloppy with the ball, and and uh, you know just couldn't make enough shots down the stretch. I think three field goals in the last six minutes. Mark Carringer, who I know is down here at the games, had several calls went against us last night. The tripping call on Martin, offensive foul on Abo when he made the basket late in the game, the technical on Rice. Yeah, there were some weird ones, but I thought the biggest uh, swing call of the game was the uh, the uh, jump ball. There was a, a loose jump ball, and uh, Boise State grabbed it. They were calling timeout, uh, and instead of the timeout for Boise State, they gave it a jump ball. There was still four seconds left on the shot clock, and this was with two minutes and 15 seconds left in a two-point game. I think it was 72-70 to 70 at that point. Uh, they gave the ball and a jump ball back to uh, Virginia Tech, and then uh, Padula hit a long three, like five or six feet behind the three-point line right as the shot clock expired, and that was kind of the dagger. That put them up five at that point. Boise State really couldn't get much closer. So uh, that was a huge play in the game. Uh, and again, now Boise State turns around and plays a, a VCU team that uh, is uh, right by Boise State in a lot of the metrics. VCU comes in as a top 100 Ken Palm team again. They are at number 91. They were beating Iowa State uh, by double digits for most of the game yesterday, and Iowa State is ranked number 17 at Ken Palm. So they played really well against a top 25 team yesterday, let the game slip away late. But this is not going to be an easy game for Boise State. Typically in the loser's bracket of these tournaments, you get easy games. That's not going to be the case uh, in this tournament. Boise State is going to have a uh, a tough game against uh, either uh, Penn State or Butler on Sunday as well. So uh, I don't know if that game went final or not. We'll check that out here as we're talking. Um, but uh, Boise State basketball, a really tough game uh, tonight against VCU and then a tough game on Sunday. And I looked it up because a lot of folks, you know, you're two and two and I get it. You're frustrated. You're disappointed. But no team in the Mountain West. And I have yet to find a team in the entire country that uh, is playing as tough of a schedule as Boise State has been right now. Boise State is in the midst of seven straight games against top 100 Ken Palm teams, seven straight. No other team in the Mountain West is playing more than four straight. And I went through the top uh, 15 or 20 teams at Ken Palm, even like the big boys, Kansas, uh, you know, Houston, Purdue, all these top teams. None of them are playing more than four uh, top uh, 100 Ken Palm teams in a row, and Boise State is playing seven. So um, you'd like to get the game tonight against VCU. You'd like to get the game against uh, you know either Butler or Penn State on, on Sunday. And I think if you could do that and get to two and two on the road trip, you would call that a massive success because you're playing a brutal schedule right now. Boise State has the toughest schedule in the Mountain West, according to Ken Palm, a top 25 hardest schedule in the nation. So you're playing one of the hardest uh, schedules in the 
combination. You got to find a way to win some of these games, though. And uh, again, yesterday was a game that you probably would have liked to have. Uh, would have liked to have had. That was a winnable game for Boise State, no doubt. And uh, they were just unable to unable to get it done. But uh, again, VCU tonight, big game at uh, 6 o'clock Mountain Time. Hopefully we'll be able to have a, a joint post game for football, pregame for basketball, right when the football game ends. Be ready to jump on for an emergency show here courtside from Orlando as we uh, talk about the football game and, and hopefully Boise State inching closer to a spot in that Mountain West championship. And then obviously we'll have uh, the basketball game and we'll show you warm-ups and things if we can, getting ready as well. Creamy Cold Boise says that Leon will beat Odom. Nothing brings me more pleasure than seeing Odom lose. Don't forget uh, Odom is the coach at VCU now. He was the coach at uh, VCU and uh, now he is, uh, or he was the coach at Utah State, excuse me. The Utah State coach is now at VCU and so uh, they'll be familiar with him. They had a little dust up with him and Max Rice trying to get in his huddle. So uh, there was some uh, little bit of tension there with Odom and, and, and Rice at, at some point. So we'll see if that carries over. But uh, Max Shugla, uh, one of their players, has transferred. Uh, Baristow transferred too, but he's hurt. But uh, Max Shugla had a big game last night. He's uh, a nice player for VCU that transferred from Utah State as well. So a couple of familiar faces uh, on the other side. Uh, Stetson says can't stand the early negativity with one loss. Turnovers were devastating. I think this team will win a lot of games, contend for the Mountain West Championship. Fun team to watch. Uh, I think Whiting deserves more minutes than Robbie at this point in the season. I'll be very, very curious to see what happens tonight. They started Whiting. I thought he got off to a nice start yesterday and played pretty well, but um, just didn't provide a ton offensively, but kind of didn't screw a lot of things up either. Roddy came in, had some bad shots, a bad turnover that led uh, to an easy bucket. Did hit a three-pointer, which was a big shot in the game at the time. But uh, down the stretch, Boise State actually played Max Rice at the point guard spot. And I know folks wanted to get on Max for the six turnovers yesterday. Um, but Boise State's best lineup was when they had Degenhart, Cam Martin, and Omar Stanley all in the game at the same time. So we'll see if they start the game that way or uh, if they get to that at some point. But I think against some of these uh, some of these teams, uh, you know, especially the bigger, more physical teams. When, when Max Rice is your shortest player at six five, and you've got you know Degan Hart at six eight, uh, Omar Stanley at six eight, and Cam Martin at you know six ten, that's a pretty uh, pretty crazy interior for Boise State. So they did it some yesterday. We'll see if they do it tonight against VCU. And again, that game comes up at six o'clock. Well, uh, mountain time. The, the football game should be over like at 530. We'll try to jump on for 30 minutes and uh, recap the football game and have the basketball pregame show. And then again, a full basketball postgame show. Basketball slash football. We'll have uh, Spencer Danielson's comments. We'll, we'll go uh, late into the night. So after the basketball game will be the true postgame show for both football and basketball. You'll hear from Spencer Danielson. You'll hear from some of the players. And then you'll hear live with Leon and some players as well uh, after that game. So uh, Stetson says can't uh, stand the early negativity on one loss. Turnovers were devastating. I think this team will win a lot of games. Content for the championship. Fun team to watch. Um, let's see. Boise State was so much bigger than Virginia Tech. I mean, it really came down to the guard play uh, for Virginia Tech. Those two guards uh, both had you know, uh, some huge threes. Both had like 18, 19 points. And they had a guard come off the bench averaging nine and had, I think, 15 or 16. So they had a guy step up and, and do better than he had been doing uh, this season. So Roddy just got to uh, settle in. Agbo uh, started last year, too. Yeah, Chibuzo Abo uh, did, you know, had it fouled out and played six minutes or something in his first game as a Bronco and ended up being an all Mountain West caliber player. So I uh, definitely think that. Um, you know, he's off to a rough start, but I don't think they're giving up on him uh, by any means. Um, but uh, let's see. Really do think Rice is a good coach. Consistently writes the season conference, but it's very frustrating watching the team start so slowly. Uh, well, I mean, this year, Nate, you're starting slowly against two ACC teams, one of which was on the road. And again, was the game winnable? Yes. But, I, you know, Boise State was an underdog by five points against Clemson. They were not supposed to win that. Boise State was an underdog by two points against uh, Virginia Tech. They were not supposed to win that. Um, and the, the metrics at Ken Palm projected a loss yesterday and projected a loss against Clemson. So uh, Boise State is 2-2, two and two, yes, but if you go read my story at BroncoNationNews.com, the way they got to the 2-2 two and two is much different than previous years. Last year they lost to um, that early, horrible early start. They lost to Charlotte. They lost to San, uh, South Dakota State. So, I mean, last year your two losses were South Dakota State and Charlotte. This year your two losses are – Virginia Tech and Clemson. So I, I think that the computer metrics, all this stuff, these were not bad losses. And again, you weren't even supposed to win the game. So uh, I do think uh, certainly for Boise State, uh, you don't want to be two and two. You don't love that. But again, you're playing one of the hardest schedules in America right now. And, um, you know, I don't want to say when you get to Mountain West play, a lot of those games are going to seem easier, but you're playing 
uh, a lot of hard competition right now while Nevada and Wyoming and a lot of these teams are playing um, you know, Colorado School of Mines and San Luis Obispo Junior College and all these schools. I mean, you go look at the strength of schedules and go look at the teams these these schools are playing. I mean, maybe you'd rather be five and zero oh, um, if you, but if you had Wyoming schedule, you would be five and zero. Oh, but you may not know some of your problems. You may not have be battle tested come conference play. And um, how many years have we seen Boise State start out really strong and then get into conference play and not do as well? I mean, I think a lot. You know. Leon Rice said it on the postgame show yesterday. Tom Izzo is 3-3 three and three right now, and he plays tough games early in the season, and the team gets better, and they figure out their problems, and nothing's hidden, and then they uh, make the changes, and they do better down the stretch and go and have success in March. And I think that's what Boise State is hoping happens um, in this in this uh, early part of the season. Because, again, they could lose tonight, and they could lose Sunday, and they could lose the St. Mary's very easily, very, very easily. This team could be 2-5, and five, and everyone's going to think the sky is falling, and those would be five – uh, losses that would not hurt them in terms of uh, you know being a bad loss. All will be quad one, quad two losses, and they could still go on a big run and be in just fine shape for the tournament. So you'd like to win tonight, though, right the ship a little bit and uh, try to finish this tournament two and one, certainly if you can. But again, VCU, a very athletic team, going to play pressure defense, going to get in your face, and um, they got some athletic dudes. It's not going to be an easy game tonight against VCU. Actually, a scary game, to be honest with you. Um, Nicholas Bowman says it's the three-point shooting that's killing us. Could have won both those games if they make some threes. Uh, Virginia Tech hit the threes last night. That was the difference. I do agree with that, but also the free throw line was a big difference last night as well. The free throws were a big advantage for Virginia Tech uh, in that game. Uh, it was uh, that was a that was a tough one, um, not being able to, uh, you know, get to the line as much as Virginia Tech did in that game. Would love to see the Broncos give Odom a beatdown. Um, let's see, agree, but it's Clemson and Virginia Tech who we'll see in the first round of the tourney. Still seem far off from where we want. Yeah, but this isn't the first round of the tournament, Nate. You play these games now, and you have four or five months to get better, and then uh, you, you, you'll be ready for a team like Virginia Tech, I think, in, in four or five months. So, um, yeah, I think you uh, they, they, they won't seem as daunting when you play a Northwestern or a Memphis after you've played – eight or nine games in non-conference play already against teams of that caliber. So uh, trust Roddy Anderson, let him attack the paint. Yeah, he can get to the paint pretty easily, but uh, hasn't finished very much on some of those layups. Um, but uh, big one tonight, again, 6 o'clock, VCU uh, and Boise State. That'll be on ESPNU. Uh, Jaden is sending in some more football videos, so I'll load those into the system here. We'll uh, continue to get you set for the football game, um, and uh, we'll do all that here. Don't go anywhere. Come back, 90 seconds, our final timeout. But we'll uh, show you some more of the scene, what's going on inside Albertson Stadium. We'll make our final predictions and thoughts. But uh, keep your comments, keep your thoughts coming. We'll go back to football as we get uh, our final commercial break out of the way here. Don't go anywhere. Back in 90 seconds on the Lithia Ford of Boise pregame show from the Cutwater Studios. You looking for a new job? Well, how about getting into the trucking industry? Our friends at Transportation Compliance Service can help you every step of the way, whether it's the big rig on your screen, the Amazon truck in your neighborhood, all the paperwork, all the things you need. Let them help you out. Transcomservice.com. They'll have you out there towing that first load in no time. Transcomservice.com. United Commercial Insurance makes business insurance easy. They can write business policy insurance in 44 states around the country. UnitedCommercialInsurance.com. Give them a call, 229-8222. Bronco Nation News, a proud client of United Commercial Insurance. We highly recommend you do as well at UnitedCommercialInsurance.com. The Reigns family is happy to have made the switch to Boise Dentistry Co. Highly recommend you do as well. Dr. Miner and his staff, full family dentistry for the whole family. They make an enjoyable experience to go to the dentist, and we highly recommend you check them out. Five locations in the Treasure Valley. You may think you're happy with your dentist. You'll be even happier if you make the switch to Dr. Miner and company. Check them out online, boisedentistryco.com. The pounds continue to fall off, and it's thanks to Dave and our friends over at Lean Feast. Check them out, leanfeast.com slash meridian. Full customizable meal prep. You want to go into the store, pick out your meals individually. That's great. It's right there on Eagle Road in Meridian. Or you can do it all online at leanfeast.com slash Meridian, and they'll deliver it to you. 208-487-5782. They're feeding the football team, the basketball team, Taylor Green, Ashton Genty, Tyson Degenhart, and more. Check them out. Lean Feast. Leanfeast.com slash Meridian. Still time to get that fall round of golf in, and you need to do it at Timberstone Golf Course out in Caldwell. Book a tee time at playtimberstone.com. The best greens in the valley, new technology, new golf carts, friendly environment, fun, challenging course. Check them out, Timberstone Golf Course. Book your tee time today, and I'll see you out there, playtimberstone.com.
All right, back here live from the Cutwater Studios. Again, more than 30 flavors, pre-mix, premium cocktails. Pick one up at your local gas station or grocery store. And a perfect afternoon, evening to have some Cutwaters, watch Boise State football, and then right into Boise State basketball. The football game tipping or uh, kicking off in about 18 minutes, I believe. 2.10 is the exact kickoff time. They're going through the uh, senior day festivities, uh, or we'll be starting here any moment, the uh, senior day festivities uh, for uh, Boise State. And then, obviously, you'll have the basketball game uh, coming up after that. This was just a few seconds ago. So, uh, video from our uh, intern, Jaden Finch, doing an outstanding job. You see the crowd filing in. There's Tyler Crow, some of the inactive players. But you see Boise State in the all-blue uniforms today. Getting set, the crowd coming in. A uh, nice, brisk, cool day for a Boise State. Not much of a student crowd yet. Hopefully they're going to be uh, showing up here, but I know that's tough on Thanksgiving break. Uh, but uh, the, the crowd's starting to pile in. Lovely all blue on the blue for the uh, game today for Boise State. So you see, uh, looks like it's going to be a nice crowd. Not quite sure they get to a sellout, but uh, they're expecting over 35,000 at least tickets out. Uh, for this one. Nate's glad the UConn game ended on time. This is the first time I've had to worry about this in a long time, but i got to figure out what channel the game's on. I believe it's Fox Sports 1. Uh, I'll have to figure out what channel the game is on because, uh, again, this is my only my fourth game in 11 years that I've missed, the first home game in 11 years that I've missed. So I'm, I am uh, feeling the struggle of all of you guys having to figure out what channel the game is on and deal with uh, commercial breaks and announcers uh, mispronouncing names and all that good stuff. So uh, we'll be watching the game uh, here in Orlando, and then we'll be courtside uh, when the football game ends to get you set for the football game uh, postgame show and the pregame show. Uh, for basketball as well. So uh, let's see here. Uh, CSU looking tough. Yep, Colorado State had a big win against Creighton. Uh, let's see. Sky Back to football, though. Sky says, I can't believe Air Force starting a QB for all the marbles who's been on the bench all season. Uh, yeah, they just obviously didn't like what they've seen from the freshman quarterback the last two games, and they are making the switch uh, to the uh, senior quarterback. So, um, yeah, that that is a little bit of a surprise. But, again, Air Force, uh, they've lost three in a row. They're struggling. they got to figure something out. So uh, going to be a fun game. It's about to come on. I'm going to go figure out how to work the uh, TV and get the game on. And looking forward to watching it with all of you guys. Uh, again, thank you to all of our great sponsors, Taco Bell, BVA uh, Development, uh, Ball Ventures, Allquist, Tommy Allquist, and our friends at Taco Bell, SON Management, and, and all the crews in the local Taco Bell uh, is in the Treasure Valley. So uh, celebrate the win tonight with a Taco Bell and a Cutwater. And uh, go uh, go if you need a developer, don't forget about our friends at uh, Tommy Alquist and BVA. And, of course, RowPaint.com, our title sponsor. Uh, you need to touch up the interior, exterior painting in your home. Now is the perfect time to schedule that with our friends at RowPaint.com. Hope you guys uh, enjoy the game today. We appreciate all you guys for checking us out. Busy day. We'll have you covered. Uh, again, we have Brandon Walton and Jaden Finch full coverage of the football game back in Boise, and then we'll have basketball coverage as well here in Orlando. So as soon as the game ends, I mean right when that game ends, make the make the switch back here to the Bronco Nation News YouTube channel. We'll go live courtside from Orlando uh, at the basketball tournament and get our thoughts on the football game and also get you set for the basketball game as well. So that'll do it. We appreciate Cutwater Spirits. Go grab a couple of Cutwaters. That four-pack would be perfect, uh, and where you can get uh, – you know, two for seven, two for six fifty. I think it is at the uh, at your local gas station or grocery store. So remember to drink responsibly, uh, but enjoy Cutwater Spirits and Lithia Ford of Boise. LithiaFordBoise.com. You can check out their full inventory of vehicles. Our title sponsor on the uh, pregame, postgame shows here. We appreciate Jim Sterk and Lithia Ford of Boise. Next time you're looking for that new vehicle, look no further than Lithia Ford of Boise. Enjoy the game tonight, folks. We'll talk to you right after the game. I'll be watching the game like you guys on TV, and I'll have some comments and thoughts on Twitter, and then we'll have a full coverage right when that game ends. Again, usually we're 30, 40 minutes. We're going to fire this thing up courtside from the State Farm Fieldhouse right when the basketball game ends. So be ready to jump on. We'll talk football. We'll talk basketball. Boise State looking to uh, clinch a spot in the Mountain West Championship game with a win and then a little help tomorrow. But uh, obviously the Broncos have to win today to stay alive and stay in that mix, and we'll see what happens. should be fun. Air Force and Boise State coming up in a mere matter of moments on Fox Sports 1. We'll talk to you on the Bronco Nation News post-game show right after the game here on the uh, Bronco Nation News YouTube channel. Enjoy the game, folks. We'll talk to you in a couple hours. Bronco Nation News live from the Cutwater Studios here in Orlando, Florida with the basketball team at the ESPN Events Invitational, but uh, it's time for some football. We'll talk to you in a couple hours. Bronco Nation News Live, bronconationnews.com.